When I came to, I was face down in the mud. No one knew how serious it was, and neither did I. I was a vibrant, very motivated, very involved college student. I had a schedule that was 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., and I loved filling up every line in my schedule. It was full of the regular classes that you would assume and the studying, but I also was in a, in a humanitarian group. We were planning our trip to Ecuador, and I was president of a women's group for our local church. And our apartment was the hub of a lot of activity, and it was kind of a social gathering. And so I never knew who was going to be sitting on my couch when I got home from this. <laughs> and for a girl who grew up shy like me, having this kind of life was an upgrade, definite upgrade for me. And every day was new and different, and I loved it. So it's Christmas break, and I am with my family. We have a tradition in our family where we go up to this sledding hill that's remote, and it's so steep that you have to snowmobile to get to the top. And this particular year, we had cousins that came and brought tubes. Well, my dad is a safety first guy. We had never used tubes on this hill. We're up on the top, we're getting ready to do our first run. And I'm the oldest cousin, I wanna make sure everybody has fun and I wanna be a good sport. So against my greater judgment, I get in a tube with my cousin. So the first three red flags is I get in and the tube, the tube is so big that we can't touch. Second, she's wedged in on top of me and I can't move. Third, my aunt, well-meaning aunt, gives us a huge shove down the mountain, which we did not need. <laughs> We're cruising down the mountain faster than I've ever gone before. And I get this alert feeling like something's wrong. And so I'm looking around and I see at the bottom of the hill, this dark black line. And I'm like, what is that? I've never seen that before. And I get this thought, it's a ditch. I'm like, there's a ditch? Yes, there's a ditch. It's like I'm having a little conversation in my mind or someone's having a conversation with me and saying, yes, that's mud. And I'm thinking, oh, dang, I got to get out of here. And we couldn't move. Next thing, I get this impression that says you're going to hit it and you're going to be OK. Everything goes into slow motion. We're kicking up snow. My cousin is delightfully screaming in my ear. And then everything goes black. When I come to, I'm face down in the mud. My cousin, I hear my cousin asking if I'm okay. And I'm thinking, man, I think I got banged up. Maybe I won't be doing that again for a little bit. And then I took a breath and it felt like there was a knife twisting in my back. And I thought, oh dang, this is serious. I never get hurt. What is going on? So I call out to my grandma, who's a retired nurse. She'll know what to do. So she comes up. And she had the presence of mind to calmly say, honey, can you feel your fingers? Can you feel your toes? And I don't know what it took for her to calmly ask me that. So we were best friends. And I said, no, my grandma, I'm fine. I'm fine, I just can't breathe. The ambulance comes, they get me on the traction board very carefully. It was the bumpiest ride down to the hospital. I don't remember that road ever being bumpy. <laughs> And I'm just bracing against the pain. They whisk me into emergency surgery, cut off all of the layers of my snow clothes, get me into the MRI. And in the middle of all this hubbub and crazy pain, I have this feeling inside, everything's going to be okay. Even as the doctors are telling my parents that I have a 50-50 chance of walking out of the hospital. I go into a six-hour emergency surgery, and they install two what I call beautiful titanium rods into my back, Ooh. completely heal lumbar number one. You can't even tell it was splintered or that it had almost severed my spinal cord. And I went to my grandma's for recuperation. They, grace, they, gra <laughs> they uh, graciously took out their, their, um, their uh, couch and put my hospital bed in between his and hers chairs. My daily aspirations were, they went from being a very social, very active, new things happening every day life to inching my toes towards the side of the bed, easing 
my feet down to the floor, carefully standing up, putting my brace on, my the fiberglass brace, and then shuffling to the bathroom. That was my daily. And my sweet patient grandma nervously watched as I learned how to climb steps, learned how to get into the shower by myself, learned how to bend over to brush my teeth, and learned how to raise my hands above my shoulders so that I could do my hair by myself. Six weeks later, I was back up at school, miraculously, against the doctor's orders. I was still a motivated young woman, but I had learned something very important for myself, that my, my accomplishments didn't equal my worth. My pace didn't matter all that much. That what I, that what I do is enough and who I am is enough. Thank you.